Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. I'm walking with the King. Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day, I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. I'm walking with the King. Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day, I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. I'm walking with the King. Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day, I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. <clears throat> Praise his holy name. I'm walking with the King. Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day, I'm walking with the King. Oh, hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Praise his holy name. I'm walking with the King. Hallelujah, I'm walking with the King. Every day, I'm walking with the King. Well, God bless you, Sister Dorset. God bless you, Sister Jackson. Good morning, Eleanor. Good morning, Sister Pam. God bless you, Sister Newby. God bless you, Deacon and Sister Polk. Good morning, Reese. God bless you. Good morning, Grace. God bless you. Good morning, Mika. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Kathy. God bless you, Brother Butler and the family. Good morning, Mother Wright. God bless you. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you and your family and all the saints in Trinidad. Good morning. God bless you, Sister Stimson. God bless you, Deacon Stimson and the family. Good morning, Mother Wilkins. God bless you and Deacon Stimson. Good morning, Cynthia. God bless you. Good morning, Elder Smith. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Margaret. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Cheek. God bless you. Good morning, Bailey. God bless you, my friend. Good morning, Sister Monique. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Wiggins. God bless you and Brother Wiggins. Good morning, Sister Jan. Good morning, Sister Pedlar. Good morning, Sister Jackson Perry. God bless you, Brother Perry and the family. Good morning, Mother Street. God bless you. Good morning, Duchess. God bless you, Brother Aaron and the family. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Burnett. Good morning, Bishop Alde, Lady Alde, and all the wonderful saints in your family. Good morning. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Sister Gail. Good morning, Brother Wardlaw. God bless you and Sister Wardlaw. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Haywood, Sister Haywood, and your family. Good morning, Angela. God bless you, my dear sister. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. Good morning. Good morning, Mother McCoy. Call. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Johnson Walker. God bless you, Deacon Walker and the family. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Tilda, my dear cousin, God bless you. God bless you, Mother Taylor. God bless you. Praise the Lord, Candace. God bless you. I pray you had a great birthday. God bless you, Sister Sherry. Good morning, Sister Golden. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Hopkins. God bless you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Sister Reed, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Glean. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Ford. God bless you. Well, good morning and praise the Lord, everybody. And welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer. For more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to witness and see the manifestation of the power of God through prayer. I received a praise report of someone who came through corrective surgery, hallelujah, with flying colors. God brought them through. They're recovering nicely. And we know it is not just the skill of the physician, but it is the power of God. It is the blessings of God. It's the favor of God. One of my students um, 
is a football player, and he was hit very hard in a game on Friday night. And it looked like, it really looked scary from where I was sitting because he was immobile for a certain amount of time. But I thank God that he was in school yesterday on the first day of school. And I told him I had been praying for him, and he thanked me. He thanked me, hallelujah, for praying for him. And it was good to see him walking and moving and doing and going to class. I just thank God because God does answer prayer. God does answer prayer, and those who pray can expect a miracle. So if you have a prayer request, we want you to share it with us. If you're on Facebook, you can place it right into the chat or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you are on Instagram, you can place it right in the chat on your screen or you can direct message Pastor RJD. And to everybody who's on the conference call and thank God for all of our precious conference call listeners, everybody on YouTube or anybody can text in your prayer request to three. 336-567-5358. Again, that number is 336-567-5358. We're adding them to the prayer list. We are calling those names out before the Lord, and we are believing God for healing, deliverance, salvation, miracles wrought, whatever is needed. We know that God is indeed able. Let's go now to the word. In Psalm number 61, Psalm number 61, and I want to read the entire 61st Psalm. The Bible says, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. For thou, O God, hast heard my cry. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. That will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. That I may daily perform my vows vows. And the Lord bless the reading of his word. Subject this morning, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock. This psalm, theologians surmise, was written in response to a very personal calamity um, for David. David suffered a number of things throughout his life. And it's interesting that despite the things that David suffered, he remained faithful in his worship to God. And this is important. In fact, some of David's greatest writings came um at a time when he was under distress. And I know that in sometimes in modern Christendom, when people are going through, they withdraw from the church. When people are going through, they stop doing what they're doing. They give up the praise and worship team. They give up the usher board. They give up the youth ministry. They give up the pulpit even. And a lot of it is because they're just some, simply under stress. And I'm not negating their stress because stress is real. I live with stress. All of us live with a certain degree of stress. But, you know, my pastor said years ago that if the devil knows he can stop you, he will stop you. And so it was taught to me. It was implanted in me that if you're going to stand in the midst of affliction, You've got to be able to persevere, to press your way, to move forward. 
even if you have opposition coming against you, you have to have it in you to push forward, to push forward. And so David, in this particular text, is dealing with the betrayal and the rebellion of his own son. Now, you can say what you want, but when rebellion or opposition or cruelty comes from those who um, live in your house, eat your bread, those that you raised and nurtured and cared for, those that you have expressed and shared your love with, it is not only dangerous, but it's emotionally damaging. Here is David's son, Absalom, who is his own son, who perhaps David had the desire to groom him, to follow him on the throne. Absalom decides to rebel against his father. And Absalom begins turning the people against David. You know, somebody will come to him as the prince and say, well, we have a complaint about X, Y, Z. And rather than addressing the complaint or saying, I will share it with my father, Absalom starts saying, well, if I was the king, you wouldn't have to go through that. If I was the king, you wouldn't have to endure that. If I was the king, you wouldn't be facing this. I would fix it. I would solve it. And, and, and you know, people do this, you know, all the time. You know, it happens on your job. If I was the supervisor, this wouldn't be happening. Or it happens in the church. If I was the pastor, if I was the first lady, if I was the missionary president or the young people's president or the choir director or the praise team leader, if I was in that position, you wouldn't be dealing with X, Y, or Z. And that is an act of betrayal. And that's what David was dealing with. He was dealing with the betrayal of his own son. And so he cries out to God for help. Because what? Do you, because not only has Absalom betrayed him, but David has been driven out of Jerusalem. In an attempt, they, Absalom was coming for him. Absalom was getting ready to overthrow him. Absalom was about to simply, um, probably kill his own father. And David has to run. David has to run. Now, David's not a young man. By this time, David's an older man because his son has grown. And he finds himself running from his own son. And, and it's a terrible thing when you deal with stuff like this, when you're past pre perhaps your teen years. You know, when we're younger, we're a little more resilient. But as you get older, and I'm feeling this myself, as you get older, you become less resilient. So here is this older man running from the son that he brought into the world, running from him to save his life. And David, in the midst of his run, is crying unto God. Because the point I wanted to make is, even when we're in sometimes the most dangerous positions, that's when God can use us to his glory. Because in the midst of David's struggle with Absalom, in the midst of having to run out of his own house, in the midst of having to flee Jerusalem and to abandon his throne, David writes this song and says, Hear my prayer, O God. Attend unto my prayer. Hear my cry, rather, O oh God. Attend unto my prayer. Lord, I need you to listen to me. Hallelujah. I need you to listen to me. I'm crying from the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. He is running. He has left Jerusalem. He is dealing with discouragement. He's dealing with exhaustion. exhaustion. But he says, from the ends of the earth will I cry. Oh my God, I don't care how far away I am from God, I'm going to cry out to God. Maybe I'm not in the church. Maybe I'm not near the church. Maybe I'm not near the altar or the sanctuary, but from wherever I am, hallelujah, I am crying unto thee. I am crying unto thee. Hallelujah. He, he felt estranged because Lotus, he's run from his home. He's run from his throne. He's run from his comfort. He's run from all of the acuteness of being king. And he's out here now. And in the midst of the run, he is crying unto God. And he makes this statement, which I think all of us can relate to. When my heart is overwhelmed, my God, when have any of us felt this way? Simply overwhelmed by the situation. 
overwhelmed by the condition, overwhelmed by what we have heard, overwhelmed by the struggle, the trial, the tribulation, overwhelmed by the stress, overwhelmed by the sickness, overwhelmed by the bills, overwhelmed by the nasty things people are saying or doing to you, overwhelmed by the betrayal, just simply overwhelmed. David says, my heart is overwhelmed. My heart is overwhelmed. And what do you do when your heart is overwhelmed? He says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When it's more than I can bear. When it's more than I can take. When it's more than I think my mind can wrap his head around. Lord, lead me to the rock. He is talking. He expresses simply the fact that I'm going through so much. I don't even have the strength to pray right now. That's what he's saying in so many words. My heart is overwhelmed and I can't even get there by myself. I need somebody to take me, my God, to the throne of grace. You know, everybody, everybody needs intercession sometime. Don't ever delude yourself into thinking that you don't need somebody to pray for you. Everybody needs somebody to pray for them, somebody to seek God on their behalf, somebody to turn to God, to cry out to God. He says, my heart is so overwhelmed, I don't know if I can get to the altar, but lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That rock is not a stone or a pebble or something that you throw. It is a mountain. Lead me to the mountain where I can hide my God from the pain, where I can hide from the affliction, where I can hide from the struggle, where I can hide from whatever is going on. It's just so much I feel overwhelmed. We don't like to say this because we think it implies weakness, but everybody, and I do mean everybody, feels overwhelmed sometimes. Everybody feels like you've got this, that, the other coming at you, and you just don't know what to do. Everybody feels like that. I know we don't like to admit it. We don't like to talk about it, but it's true. Everybody feels that overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock. Oh my God, that is higher than I. Why do I need the rock? Because I need a shelter. Verse 3, thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. When you've got the enemy coming at you, you need to be in an elevated place. All right. One of the elements of warfare is you want to be at a higher elevation because the higher elevation gives you a better view of where the enemy is. So I want to be in an elevated place or I need air support. You know, they're talking about one of the things that's made the battle very tough for Ukraine is that they still don't have supremacy in the air. That's why they're asking for jets and fighter jets and planes to fly so that they can get supremacy. So because they know from a higher position, they have a better vantage point to fight the enemy. And when you are in a higher position, you are in a place where you can see the enemy coming. You can see the attack. You can see what direction he's going to come from. Is he coming from the east? Is he coming from the west? Is he coming coming from the north or the south. I can see the enemy coming. So I need God to position me in a higher place so I can see the enemy. So I can see the enemy and to shelter me from the attack of the enemy. Lord, thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. Verse four is critical. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. The tabernacle. Now, the tabernacle was the place of worship. But what made the tabernacle different from the temple is that the tabernacle moved with the children of Israel. For 40 years, that tabernacle followed them or went in front of them, rather, in the wilderness. And the tabernacle would go in front. They would follow the tabernacle. When they would plant camp, they would put the tabernacle in the middle, and they would have three tribes to the north, the south, the east, and the west, all around the tabernacle. It, sent, it, it symbolized the fact that God was with them wherever they were going. And David says, I will abide in thy tabernacle. I need to be with you. I 
I am, oh God, discouraged. I am broken. I am hurt because my own son has turned against me. But Lord, be my tabernacle. Lord, be my shelter. Lord, be the place that I go for the benefit of protection. Lord, be the place and the tabernacle, the presence of God is your place of protection. Oh my God, one of the things the enemy tries to do whenever any of us face trouble is to separate us from God. Some of us stop going to church. Some of us stop participating in ministry. Some of us stop doing the things that we do. Some of us stop praying because we're discouraged. And that's the enemy because not only has he attacked you, but he's trying to cut you off from your source of strength. Say, stay near the altar. My God, if you're going through, if you're struggling, if the enemy is, is attacking you, don't retreat from the altar. Stay at the altar. Stay where God can bless you. Don't let the enemy isolate you. Oh my God, from the people of God. Don't let the enemy isolate you from the presence of God. But you get somewhere and just drop your anchor and say, I'm not leaving the tabernacle because I need the Lord to cover me. I need God to protect me. I need God to shelter me. So I'm going to stay and abide in the tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covering or the covert of thy wings. Lord, cover me the same way that the eagle covers the eaglets in the midst of the storm. Lord, cover me the same way that the birds cover the baby birds in the midst of calamity. I need God to cover me. I'm in a bad state. I'm in a bad place. I'm struggling mentally, emotionally, physically. I'm running for my life, but God, I'm overwhelmed, but God, cover me. Cover me, protect me from what's happening right now. I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to, oh God, navigate through this, but I need the Lord to cover me and protect me and to be the tower, be the tabernacle, because the tabernacle goes wherever you are. Just keep this in mind. The tabernacle is not the temple. The temple is a fixed structure. It's a fixed place, but the tabernacle goes with you. So Lord, be with me. David is on the run, but Lord, let the tabernacle be with me while I'm on the run. Let the tabernacle cover me. Let the tabernacle protect me because the tabernacle represents what? The presence of God. And if you have the presence of God, if you have the presence of God, you're covered, you're protected. That's why, my brothers and sisters, we have the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We have the Holy Ghost because we have the Holy Ghost to protect us and to cover us and to shelter us. I'm not finished. I got to close. I'll come back to this tomorrow. But I need the Lord. Lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock. I'm struggling with a number of things. But God, lead me to the rock. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank God for the word. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Gracious God, I love you. I thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love and your kindness. Lord, I'm so grateful that you have kept us last night. We were able to rest and you awakened us this morning, God, in our right minds. Lord, we're able to get out of the bed and get prepared to join this great cadre of believers, God, from all over the world. I thank you today for the morning prayer family. I thank you for everybody that's here, whether they've come by Facebook or Instagram or conference call or YouTube. Lord, however we have gathered, God, I thank you that we are here and we're in your presence. So, Lord, flood this atmosphere, my God, with your glory and your honor. Flood this atmosphere, God, with your presence today. And God, minister to every need that is on this prayer line this morning. Morning. I thank you, God, that we are here today. I thank you, God, that we're gathered. Now, God, send your anointing and release unexpected favor 
upon the sons and daughters that are on this prayer line today. Lord, I'm praying that you would minister to every need, God. Remember every petition, every prayer request. Remember everybody, my God, that is crying out to you because they have a need. Remember the souls today that are overwhelmed, overwhelmed by life, overwhelmed by challenges, overwhelmed by difficulties, overwhelmed by sickness or affliction or relational problems. God, we're coming to you on their behalf today. We're praying, my God, that you remember Ron Snipes. We're praying, oh God, for Celeste. Genoa. We're praying for Mary Edith Rock. We're praying, my God, for Judy McKinney, for McGill Christian. We're praying for Judy McLeod today. We're praying for Ronnie Bullock. We're praying for Kamisha Blunt Robertson. We're praying, my God, for Shakira Simmons. We're praying for Helen oh God, Alexander. We're praying for Joyce Tibbs today, for Cynthia Baisden. We're praying this morning for Bishop and Mother Joseph. We're praying for Vera Coleman today. God, we're lifting up Stephanie Roberts. We're praying for Saeed Norwood. We're praying for Kim Coleman, for Ada, for missionary Sarah Page, for Sister Teresa Page. We're praying for Jackie Walker today. We're praying for Andrika. We're praying for Pavlina. We're praying for Tanya Austin, for the Brown family, the Mangum family, the Gentry family. Every name on the prayer list today we're holding up now. Lord, save and deliver. My God, those who are outside of the ark of safety, my God, stretch out your hand. We're praying for Irvin today. Day. Stretch out your hand this morning. Stretch out your hand, God, to everybody. Oh, God, that needs deliverance. And Lord, destroy the yoke right now. Destroy the chain. Destroy, my God, everything that the enemy is trying to build in their lives. My God, destroy it in the name of Jesus Christ and save and deliver, God. Let them repent. Let them be born of the water and of the spirit today. God, I'm praying for backsliders today. Those who have have drifted and fallen away. But God, I believe you that you're the God of reclamation. You're the God of revival. You're the God of restoration. So find them where they are, my God, and restore them. I'm praying for the discouraged today. My God, they have faced so much. They're dealing with so much. They're overwhelmed by life. But yet, God, I believe that you're able to lift the spirit and you're able to turn situations around. So I'm praying, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would bring deliverance deliverance right now. Lord, we're praying for deliverance and for healing. Oh God, and for the destruction of every yoke. God, I'm praying today for healing. Oh God, for those that are sick or afflicted. God, remember George. Remember Talitha. Remember my God, Daya Thompson. Remember Kamaya today in the name of Jesus. We're praying today that you remember Lady Deborah Carter. Remember Bertha Coleman. Remember Lorraine Humphreys. Remember Anitha Hickleton. Remember Miracle Destiny today in the name of Jesus Christ. We're praying, my God, for Keisha. We're praying for Chucky Brody, for Charles Brody, for Eddie Mooney. We're praying for Sister Deborah Brown. We're praying for Cleveland Chandler. We're praying, my God, for Dennis Gray, for Bessie Drawn, for Juliet Johnson. We're praying for Noah today. We're praying, my God, for my cousin Spencer. Lord God, everybody that's sick everywhere, God, touch them now. Remember, my God, Minister Perkins. Remember Daniel. Remember, my God, Deacon Adams today. Deacon Wilson. Remember Deacon and Sister Harrison. Remember Elder Tall and Elder Dokes today. God, remember Phil. Remember Mother DuBose this morning. God, continue that healing process. Says. Remember Cynthia bathed in today. God, I'm praying today that you remember Missionary Domingo, Missionary Brisbane, Missionary Roseman, Missionary, my God, Hodges today, Missionary Janet Davis, God. Lord, remember in, with your healing virtue now. Look on Mother Wilson today. Look on my God, Deacon Grant this morning. I'm praying today for Pastor and Lady Winston. I'm praying today, my God, that you remember Bishop D, that you remember Mother Hicks and Mother Owens, that you remember Remember Apostle Keith. We're praying for Bishop Early Dillard, Bishop Alfonso Brooks. We're praying today for Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell. My God, stretch out your healing hand. Oh God, upon Mother Coleman today, Sister Polk, in the name of Jesus, we're praying today that you remember, my God, Bishop Richard Phillips, Bishop Richard Johnson, Bishop Clonell Williams, Bishop Irving Taylor, Bishop Gregory Wilder, Bishop Henry Hargrove. God, remember Bishop Alvin Palmer. Remember, my God, in the 
name of Jesus. Mother Jackson this morning, I'm praying God that you remember Apostle, hallelujah, Herbert Evers, Apostle Leroy Joseph, Apostle Charles Williams, Apostle Sylvester Norwood. God, look on Brother Wiggins. Look on Brother and Mother Sherrod. Look on Mother Garland today. Dr. Hayward, Dr. Hayward's wife, Dr. Hayward's mother. My God, look on Mother Jill, Mother Pride. I'm praying today, my God, for your healing upon Mother Chambers. In the name of Jesus, your healing upon, oh God, in your grace be upon Mother Carter, Mother Moorhead, Lady Staten. God, remember Pastor Carr and Minister Carr. Remember Elder Tyson, my God, Elder Smith today. Lord, I'm praying for your grace, oh Shandi Adam Messiah, and your healing to be upon Mother Foster, Henry J. Brother Cliff, God, touch them in the name of Jesus. Remember Mother Foster. Remember, my God, hallelujah, Mother Holman, Mother Tanaj, Missionary Simmons today. God, look on Cynthia, Catherine, and Duchess. God, I'm praying today for Marlette. I'm praying today for Maurice. I'm praying, my God, for Tony, for Dennis. Hallelujah, for Kimberly. God, remember these precious souls with your healing virtue. God, walk into every hospital, nursing home, rehab center, and God, bring the healing that only you can provide. Lord, I'm praying for grieving families this morning everywhere. Remember, my God, that family that lost a middle schooler. God, I'm praying for Missionary Singleton. I'm praying for Mother Sally Carr. I'm praying for Dolores Mitchell this morning. God, I'm praying for grieving people everywhere. Remember, my God, Pastor and Lady Johnson. Remember Bishop and Lady Valia today. God, I'm praying, by God, for strength for the Mitz family. I'm praying, God, that you would remember the Barr family, the McClendon Pulley family, Pastor Grandison Revis and his family, Mother Pendergrass and the family, Mother Garland today, Lisa Coles and family, Mother Wilkins and family, Elder Walton and family, everybody everywhere that's grieving, God, look on them. Remember, my God, Mother Moy and Mother Walker today. Look on, my God, Jaleesa, oh God, and her family, Jackie and her family, Takesha and her family, Jerry and his family. Look on Phoenicia and her family, God. Lord, we're praying for, hallelujah, the Perkins family. God, strengthen them, God, as they grieve. Lord, we're praying today that you would sustain on every side, God, and help the people. Remember, my God, Lady Maxwell, Charles and Cedric, and the family. Remember, my God, Dr. Carter and the family. Apostle Phil Shekinah and the family. God, I'm praying today that you would remember in the name of Jesus, Mother Grant and the family, Mother Harrell and the family. God, look on the groovers today, my God, in your precious name. Look on, my God, the Hargroves, the Kramers, the Blunts, God, everybody that's grieving, the Bonhams, the Taylors, the Lloyds, the Carters, the Giles family. Look on the Meadows family, the Moyer family, the Perkins family. God, remember the Dockery family, Sister Pam, her mom, and her sisters. God, we're praying today that you remember the White family. Look on Anita and the Brian Hopkins family, Margie and the McLean Melvin and Street family. God, remember, my God, in the name of Jesus, the Ransom family, the Jackson family, the Ned family, the Newkirk family, the Umstead family, the Nunn family. Look on Brenda and the Alan McNeely family, Sean and Monique and the Gary Porter family, Trell and Ryan and the Allen Williams family. God, remember, oh God, Tommy and Michelle and the Clark family. God, we pray, my God, for the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdy's, the Sneeds, the Washington Fields family. We pray, God, that you would remember, my God, the Winninghams, the Bankses, the Middletons, the Taylors. God, look on the Felix family, the Sapata family, the Mannix, the Boojums, the Gleans, the Arthurs, the Matherins, the Briggs family. God, look on them in a special way. Look on, my God, the Taylors, the Phillips, the Joseph, the Davises, God, the Harvard. God, look on the Austins, the Adams family. Look on the Allens, the Caldwells, the Hayes, the Moors. My God, every grieving family everywhere. Every grieving widow, widower, child, parent, sibling, loved one. God, give comfort in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying for the church today. I'm praying for the entire body of Christ. Every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. I'm praying for Apostle James May today. Apostle Bradford Berry and their precious first ladies. God, I'm praying that you would strengthen in the body of Christ on every hand. Remember the bishops and the elders. Remember the first ladies. Remember, oh God, the pastor's children, the mothers and missionaries, ministers and deacons, all of the young people in the church, God. Look on them today. Look on the musicians, the singers, the psalmists, everybody in the church. My God, and give grace, give comfort, give peace, give strength in the name of Jesus Christ. So many feel overwhelmed, but I'm asking you, God, to lead us to that higher place, to keep us 
sheltered by your tabernacle to sustain us, my God. We're praying, Lord, for first responders, essential workers, firemen, policemen, EMTs. We're praying, my God, for school employees and students everywhere. God, protect us, keep us, and let the students learn and prosper and grow. God, I'm praying today for everybody that works, that you would keep them from incident, from illness, from accident. My God, I'm praying for those that need a job, that you would open doors in the name of Jesus Christ and make the provision, God, that only you can. Lord, I'm praying today, oh God, that you would heal the land. Lord, heal the land from sin. Heal the land from violence, from hatred, from jealousy. Heal the land, my God, from injustice. Heal the land in the name of Jesus. Heal the land, God. Oh God, from racism and sexism. And let your church be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. God, we need you. So cover us, protect us, and keep us. And as you do all of this, we give your name the glory, the honor, and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on, let's give God praise right now. Everybody on this line, let's give God praise. That's it. Give him praise. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. Give him the glory. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. That's it. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is my declaration for today. I will abide and worship. I will abide and worship. David was run out of the throne. He was run out of the capital. He was separated from his house and from those things that were familiar to him, but he ran, but he abided in the tabernacle. He asked the Lord to be his shelter, to be his covering. And maybe I'm in an unfamiliar place. Maybe I'm somewhere where I didn't plan to be, but I still have the covering of God upon my life. So even if I'm on the run, I'm going to abide in the tabernacle because the tabernacle goes where you go. I'm going to abide in the tabernacle and I'm going to worship in the tabernacle. Don't let the enemy take you out of the presence of God. Do not let the enemy take you out of the presence of God. Remain in the tabernacle and remain under God's covering. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm trusting that this biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your morning is off to a great start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Thank God for those that join us by conference call. Keep coming, keep sharing the number, and keep being a part of prayer each morning at 6.30 a.m. You can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, and Spotify. All of this available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our radio broadcast airs every morning at 8.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Let me thank everybody that sees and sows and shares with this ministry. Your gifts are so important because they help us to do the things that we need to do, and we appreciate them, and we appreciate you. And if you desire to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church. Church, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. You can also give online. Our website is www.refugetemple, N is in North, C is in Carolina.com, and you can give on the donate page. That's refugetemplenc.com. If you have the GiveLify app, you can share via GiveLify. Just type in Refuge Temple Burlington. You'll see a picture of the church, and you can make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign the number one refuge, dollar sign one refuge, and you can make your gift there. And we thank you for your giving, but we thank you most of all for being a part of the Morning Prayer family. September 29th through October 1st, I'm inviting the entire Morning Prayer family to Burlington to be a part of our Prayer Power Weekend. It's going to be praying, preaching, deliverance, healing. God's going to move in a mighty way. We have as our 
musical guest on September 30th, Pastor John P. Key, and you can reserve your spot now. Don't wait. Don't delay. The spots are going. We want you to have a place. So reserve that spot and come and be with us. And that Sunday morning, we will be in worship together at Refuge Temple. So please be a part of what God is going to do in our midst in the name of Jesus Christ. And please keep coming to prayer. And please keep praying. And as you pray, pray for me. Pray for Lady Davis. Pray for our children. Pray for my father. Pray for my sisters. Pray for my in-laws, our nieces, our nephews, our entire family. Pray for Refuge Temple that God would continue to bless us. And let's pray one for another that the grace and mercy of God might keep us and cover us. The Lord abide and deliver you from that overwhelmed heart. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. God bless each of you. Shalom. Shalom.